See, they are busy collecting ingredients for ritualistic ceremony, yield only temporary benefit. See, you, if you, the permanent benefit is being relieved of sinful reactions, and that comes from at least Nama Bas, man. See, so you should at least, you know, do that, but that's really, that's even tough with the kind of association. But you, if you hear, if you hear from devotees who chant the holy names with, with what you see in the scriptures, ecstatic love and devotion, with the symptoms and all that, oh man, you know, then, then you're, the benefit is eternal. See, you'll be relieved of sinful reactions very quickly and then tears will appear in your eyes. It's like you know, people coming here, that happens. They are not attracted to the Sankirtan movement. Instead, they are interested in Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. And many Vaishnavas are just, they want Moksha, they want liberty, they want to be free. And that's natural. That's a step. But there's something better than that. See, the Sankirtan movement. Now, the real Sankirtan movement See, there's the external one where people just go out. They don't have much real transcendental or any transcendental affection for Krishna. But they go out on the order of their guru and they do engaging in sankirtan. You know, collect a lot of followers if they can. And, you know, and they also blissed out. They get some bliss and liberation feeling for going out in sankirtan. But that's not the sankirtan that Lord Chaitanya started. See, you got to understand... Chaitanya Bhagava, chapter 1 and 2, says the beginning of the Sankirtan movement was the Lord relishing the holy name of Krishna publicly in front of his, his persons who believed in him, who loved him and trusted him. They were his friends, non-envious. And then he showed them the deepest revelation and realization of the supreme truth, ecstatic devotion. He showed that. He chanted Krishna's name, but not just by name, with the feeling of ecstatic love. Chanted the pastimes of the Lord with ecstatic love, with tears and all that came. That was the beginning of the Sankirtan movement, as it is the beginning here also. Because we're doing that. We're beginning the Sankirtan movement, following in the footsteps of Lord Chaitanya. That's why there's a lot of resistance. Now, as there was then, he locked the doors. He locked. The door is locked here, in a sense, people, they blaspheme and criticize. If you believe those, bull, those guys bullshitting you with the blasphemy and all that, then you go away too. And so we're here with sincere devotees who really want Krishna, who believe in ecstasy, who are attracted to the Raganuga path. They're attracted to ecstatic worship, like the book says, Vishwanachar. The only qualification is attraction to that. Even though you may not have it yet. Instead, they are interested in dharma, artha, kama, and moksha. And so many devotees are, are, it's good enough for liberation from them. But if you want ecstatic devotion, see, obviously if you want Goloka Vrindavan, they don't know this, they, they, they say, yeah, I want to worship Krishna, I worship Krishna. Yes, Hare Krishna, go to the temple, look and all that. But do they in their heart really want that? Well, if they, in their heart they really want that, the Lord would lead them to the devotee who chants the holy names with great ecstatic devotion because that's the only way path to get it is through the devotees who do like that, who worship like that. See, so that shows you most devotees are still interested in liberation and not Goloka Vrindavan. Because if you did, you see, Goloka Vrindavan is filled with ecstatic devotees who cry, laugh, and chant like madmen. If you don't like that way and mood of worship when it appears in this world under the order of the divine force, then what's that saying? You don't really want that place yet. Or you just don't know about that place and need to be instructed, as we do here. 
People who see this kind of worship now publicly and they say, yeah, God, I want to worship like that. See, and they come. That's called Raghunuga Bhakti. That's the qualification. But if you're, oh, Krishna, oh, Krishna, oh, Prabhupada, and all this, see? and then you see a devotee who is worshiping the Lord in the mood of Goloka Vrindavan, and you don't, I say, what is this? I don't like this. But in other words, you don't either you don't know who Krishna and the devotees really are there, or you're just adverse. You don't want that. Maybe you want moksha. Or maybe you want to be a temple president. Maybe you want to be a guru. Dharma, arta, you know. You want some economic development benefit. Maybe you want to be a big guru and have your expense account and fly on planes all over the world. See? But you can't really give bhakti to anybody. But that's not an issue because nobody even seems to care about it much. They don't even know what it is because their gurus don't know what it is. Yeah. Proof is if you really want bhakti and you really study Prabhupada's books, you've got a sincere heart. Why wouldn't you be here? Why wouldn't you? This is where it's available. It's already proven it's available here. People are getting it. Okay, we'll stop here. I've, I've finished. <laughs> if you missed anything from uh, before, you can watch the replay of the other video. There's a lot of exciting stuff in that other video, I think. So, hey, thank you for coming, everybody. Hare Krishna. <laughs>